This video is about improvement. Now I am always striving to be a better angler and what I'd love to do is take you on one of those journeys with me. Now to go right back to the start, we need to go back four or five years. World feeder champs in South Africa. I was selected to fish for England. It was going to be the trip of a lifetime, but I was told that casting a long way could come into play up to distances of 130, 140 meters, something like that. We knew as a team, we needed to get better at that. I spent days and days practicing and refining my kit. So I was up to scratch when we eventually went out and fished on the venue. The venue in question, like a lot of venues, resulted in us fishing less than 30 meters. The long distance casting didn't come into play, but I learned a vital skill that I could take forward for the rest of my fishing. Now let's get one thing straight. Long distance casting isn't everyone's cup of tea. It isn't a necessity either. I know though that adding that string to my bow is gonna help me become a better angler. Because let's take an example. If I can fish comfortably at 100 meters, I know that I'm gonna be able to fish very, very easily at 60 or 70 meters. It's gonna make the rest of my fishing a lot simpler. So we're at the local reservoir and we're gonna have a cast out. We're gonna have a bit of a workout just to see where we are with our standard feeder fishing gear, our distance feeder fishing gear. I wanna know where we can make some improvements. I've got a target in my mind of 150 meters with a method or a hybrid feeder. It sounds like pie in the sky to me at the minute, but who knows, we might get there eventually. Right, we're talking about distance. We've got to clear something up. I'm talking about fishing at distance. I'm not talking about casting over a field. There's no fish in the field. I'm not talking about casting where my feeder or my lead is going to plunge into the water at a million miles an hour. I want to be able to cast a distance comfortably, hit the line clip properly, lower that feeder into the water and make sure my bait stays on that feeder and I'm actually fishing effectively at distance. That's what it's about for me. So it's not a bravado competition about casting a million miles and the feeder goes into the water, you know, like a bag of cement. I want to fish as nicely as possible at the furthest distance possible. That is the theory. Let's get some gear out. So we've just got back from a really interesting session at the local reservoir, literally just casting. We want to see where we're at at the minute. Now, conditions have been well against us. Wind in our face. We're never going to hit maximum distance when it's like that. But I think it's been a really good exercise to get there and get the arms moving. But also, just get some figures in my phone, make some notes, and let's just see where we're at at the minute. First of all, I think we need to talk about kit and how much difference I think that's gonna make because I think changing our gear a little bit is gonna be the place where we're gonna get maximum gains. So it's gonna be the easiest place as well because literally I haven't got to learn anything. I can just literally swap one, one rod for another or one reel for another. You know, it's a really easy fix that is. So kit I've used today, Free Spirit, High S, 13 foot feeder rod. It's the power version, but I'm using a special. So. The special is a softer version of that power rod. I love it for fishing 80 meters plus. I think it's a great rod for that. Now, it isn't my beast of a rod, but it's the rod that I would use in a proper fishing situation from 80 meters to 100 meters, let's say. So I think it's a really good test to put that rod to the test and see how far it could chuck. I've matched that to a Daiwa Castism reel I filled that reel to the brim with six pound M tech line, and then we're using a shock leader of 30 feet of 12 pound line. Now, that is my standard distance method feeder, hybrid feeder setup. Somewhere that if I was fishing maybe Boddington or Boston and I needed to chuck a long way, that's going to be my setup. But I feel that we can improve on that. So, first, the quickest fix is changing the rod i'm going to go to the 14 foot high s that's going to give me extra power i'm going to use the distance version it's slightly stiffer so hopefully if i can use the right weight of feeder i can compress it it's going to give me more spring 
I'm going to get more distance just by changing my rod. It's going to be such a quick fix. And I know that when we go back, you know, four or five years ago, when I was practicing for South Africa, that 14 foot rod, that was chucking maybe 20 or 30 meters further than that 13 foot rod. And that 14 foot rod is the rod that I ultimately, ultimately settled on for chucking those mega distances. Now, let's talk about the reel because this is really important and really interesting if I'm honest. I tried two different reels today. I tried my normal distance feeder fishing reel, a mini big pit, we'd like to call it, and I tried it against my standard smaller reel that I would use for most of my normal style commercial fishing work for maybe up to 50 meters, let's say. The casting difference, the actual distance achieved, wasn't too dramatic. So when I put my Daiwa caster on, my maximum cast today with my 90 gram lead, it was I felt was compressing that rod perfectly. 90 grams was the weight I've used today, around three ounce. With my Daiwa caster on, I'd reach 135 meters. Obviously, remember we've got that stiff wind in our face, 135 meters. I'd like a bit more conditions though have put paid to that. When I put the smaller reel on, we could get to 120 meters. So the distance difference wasn't too much really. Where there was a difference though, was it felt like an eternity to reel in with the smaller reel. It also felt like there wasn't the power there to reel in with that smaller reel. So just for some reference, I did some 100 meter tests. And this is interesting because when people talk about fishing 100 turns of a reel or I've cast a long way, I've fished 80 turns, doesn't always equate to meters. You've got to remember that. So when I cast 100 meters with my Daiwa castism reel, it was 112 turns of the reel handle to bring that lead back to the rod tip. And likewise, with that smaller reel, it was 124 turns. So more turns, also less power there when I'm reeling in. It felt effortless with that bigger reel, but with the smaller reel, it did feel like a bit of a job to reel that lead back in. The main thing that you've got to take from this is, that when someone tells you, or when you feel you're casting a long way, and you talk about turns of the reel handle, it doesn't equate to meters. So remember, when the person next to you is telling you they're chucking 100 turns, and they think it's 100 meters, 100 turns of that reel handle, in reality, it's probably between 80 and 90 meters. It's nowhere near 100 meters. So you've got to bear that in mind. Really interesting fact I thought that was to take from the day. Now, one of the other areas I think I can gain some distance is with my main line. I'm using six pound at the minute. I think we could change that to four pound and still have no problems landing big fish. Remember, we've got a shot leader on, so even at short range when we're piling loads of pressure on, the shot leader's gonna be on the reel. We can still put loads of pressure on and I think we're still gonna land those bigger fish. Drag though is your worst enemy when you're trying to cast a long way. Obviously, drag through the rod rings as the line shoots through the rings, drag over that lip of that spool of the reel, drag through the air, that thicker line is gonna get more drag, it's gonna create more drag, it's gonna cut down on the distance. So thinner line, hopefully it's gonna go a long way. So I'm loading four pound onto the reels, it's going to still go right up to the lip of that spool. We still wanna cut down as much as we can of all that friction going over the lip of that spool. I think that's gonna make a massive difference. So we've looked at the rod, we've looked at the reel, We've looked at the main line, we've made some massive changes there. I think the next thing we need to look at is the feeder because there's some mega interesting stats on the feeder. When I tell you we cast 135 meters with the straight lead, the 90 gram straight lead, and I put my feeder on, we got some massive losses once I put that feeder on. Now, one of the biggest lessons we learned from that first trip out was the distance difference between casting a straight lead or a bomb and a feeder. A massive distance loss. So, obviously a straight lead or a bomb, it's aerodynamic, all the weight is distributed properly. We were casting a three ounce bomb, 135 meters, despite that awful headwind, despite using thick main line, maybe not quite the right rod, we were still reaching 135 meters by hitting the line clip hard. Now. We want to do this test, we want to make sure everything's right, and we want to make sure that we're fishing. So we need to hit the line clip properly. We don't want a load of loose line floating in the air and the bomb or the feeder crashing into the water. We just won't be fishing effectively doing that. When we switched to the feeder, we lost a massive 30 meters. 
the wind was catching that feeder, there just wasn't the weight there, and the aerodynamics of that feeder just weren't the same as that straight lead. We were casting that feeder 105 meters. Again, hitting the clip nicely, but we're still way short of the target that we need to be at. So that got me thinking, we need to tweak the design of our feeder a little bit. So first thing I did when I got home is I weighed our feeder, loaded up with pellets, the same as we were casting it out on the bank, and we found that that feeder weighed 74 grams. Obviously the bomb that we were casting, 90 grams, we're losing 15 or 16 grams there in weight. Firstly, we need the weight to obviously carry everything out there, carry that line out there. We need the weight also to compress the rod so the rod can spring that feeder out there. We needed to find some extra weight from somewhere. So that's a really easy job. I've literally glued a strip of lead to the bottom of the feeder. It's added that 15 or 16 grams that we needed and also I'm not too bothered that it's on the bottom of the feeder. Now, some people will try and put that lead inside the feeder and sort of try and hide it inside the feeder. But I imagine that there's a lot of silt where we're going to be casting at long distance. And I think that feeder sinks a little bit into the silt anyway. So I'm not too worried about adding a little bit of height to that feeder. I don't think it uh, makes a difference. The other thing, and you've probably noticed this, we've added a stem. Now this has made a huge difference. I noticed that when I was casting out, especially into that wind, I would I would spot the feeder wobble as it went out and that wobble definitely cut us down on distance. So I've added a stem to the feeder, it's five inches long and this, it's a little bit of a homemade job this is. I'm sure there's uh, tackle manufacturers out there working on this sort of thing as we speak and they'll do a very neat job of it. But it's an old float top and bottom cut off and we slide that on the line and then when we attach our feeder we can slide everything down over the top of the stem it fits nice and snugly and what that does is it stabilizes everything it stops that wobble when we're casting out five inches long 12 or 13 centimeters something like that i've just got a marker pen backed it out a little bit just to make me feel a little bit more comfortable when it's sitting on the bottom but trust me that stem after that's added 10 or 15 meters to the cast we're back at the reservoir and today is d-day now we've got all our new kit we've got our longer stronger rod we've got our heavier feeder with that stem on it we've got our lighter main line but you know what? All of that means nothing without the right technique. And in the past, I've been really privileged to have rubbed shoulders with Mark Hutchinson. Now, Hutch teaches long range casting. He's a carp angler primarily, does a bit of match fishing, but he can chuck a hell of a long way. And along with maybe two or three other guys, I think he's pioneered this long range carp fishing that you see a lot of specimen anglers doing. And Hutch has always talked to me about getting my arms up really high and pulling my left hand into my chest as fast as possible. But what he wants to create with that long cast is the circle. He wants to create a big circle with the rod because you're then you're fully compressing the rod and you're getting maximum compression and distance as you cast out. So bringing the lead or the feeder back really slowly and not flat rodding yourself. Quite often people feel that by having a fast backswing, they're going to cast a long way. It's the opposite, because what you tend to do is flat rod yourself. You swing your feeder back a million miles an hour, the feeder swings behind you, and then straight away, you're putting pressure on the line with no curve in the rod at all. It's all about curving that rod, compressing that rod, and creating that circle as the, as the feeder bombs out at the distance. He's also talks about getting the rod high. So as soon as you release the feeder, get the rod tip high, that way the line can peel off the rear effortlessly. So, Hutch has really put me on the track with, you know, the, the, the primary technique with casting a long way. Now also, I've spoke to my good mate Tom. You don't know Tom, he doesn't even go fishing, he's a golfer. But he's got some really interesting points to put across about casting. Might make a difference, you never know. So, my good mate Tom booms it a long way with the driver and he's going to show me with uh, my casting on the iPad where I'm going wrong because I think we can get, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 20 meters more, if we just get our technique a little bit better. So how can we relate it to, to golf, Tom? So the uh, the similarities mainly is the uh, the transition through the body. It's also known in golf as the sequencing. 
Um, in golf, we sort of drive through our hips, our legs, and the power comes through into our hands. Obviously, when you're casting, you're going to be a little bit more grounded, like uh, like Rob is here. Um, and obviously, you want that transition to finally come into the hands at the end where the speed takes place. So you've almost got to allow the body to wait for the, the rod to come to the top and then unleash the cast. And that's probably the similar you know, so, golf. So you know my legs then. You're saying that I'm grounded. Could I sort of move my weight almost from my legs and get a bit of more flow from my body? Is that what you're sort of saying? I'd definitely give it a go. Yeah, I'd definitely give it a go. I'd probably try utilising the ground force, uh, maybe try pushing off from that and letting that flow through. Okay. Or even try you know, a bit of hip rotation as I cast it to see if I can get any extra okay. speed. Yeah, I do feel um, I do feel a little bit static when I'm, when I'm doing it, but maybe if I give it a little bit more room, that's going to be the way to go. 100%, yeah. So any dynamic move is going to be a little bit more powerful than a static move, um, but you might find there's a bit of an inconsistency to start with. Um, but yeah, can I give it a go? Superb, what a man. So we've got the tools, we've got the technique, we've got that 150 meter target in our mind. Let's see if we can go and hit it. Well, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, and I think it's time to show you guys what all the fuss has been about because I'm going to walk you through a cast in real time. Now, we've had a couple of practice casts. Not all of them have been fantastic, but we've hit the target, that 150 meter mark, a couple of times. So I thought it's time for you, now my arms are warmed up, to see what we're talking about. Right, I've got my loaded feeder, my modified feeder. I've also got my 14 foot rod, my stronger, more powerful rod. I've got that light main line. I've made a modification to myself. I've got lovely soft hands, I don't want to ruin them. So I'm just using a little casting stool there just to try and protect my index finger. One thing we've got to talk about is the wind. There's always going to be some sort of wind on one of these big waters. We're talking about casting a long way. The wind's going to affect everything we do. It's not quite as windy as that first day we came up practicing. It's not in our face. It's more right to left, I'd say. But there's wind on the water. And I think it's just something you've got to contend with. Now, all we're trying to do is fish effectively at distance. We're just trying to cast further than the guy next to us, really. That's all we're trying to do in this, with this little exercise. If I can hit my clip really nice and firmly at that long distance, I'm happy. I'm not too worried that maybe there's two metres of bow, three metres of bow in the line where the wind's caught it. I'm not too worried about that. I just want to fish further than the guy next to me. And I think that's what this exercise is all about. So, we're going to have a cast now. I've got... Hutch's words ringing in my ears about keeping my arms nice and high and slow back and creating that circle. I've got Tom's words as well going around in my head about maybe transferring some weight through my body into the cast. And I think it's time to give it a go. So we've sticked up already. We've sticked up at 150 meters. And obviously that's what that's the target we've been aiming for. So we're going to try and wind up and give it a big cast. Nice and slow back, arms nice and high, and power it through. There we go. God, that felt nice. <laughs> Rod high in the air. Go on, go on, go on. Hit the clip. Perfect. There we go. Spawn. <laughs> I'm over the moon with that. Um, I can't stress enough how hitting the clip hard is important because that way the feeder lands lead side down. It means it protects your bait. No point casting a long way if all your bait just falls off your feeder on impact. We're trying to protect our feeder and get our parcel of bait to the bottom. Remember, it's about fishing effectively. I want to be able to catch fish out that distance, not just be able to cast that distance. It's For me, it's all about fishing. And you know what? You might say, Rob, what a pointless exercise. We're never going to be able to cast 150 meters in a match. There's going to be some set, of, some set of circumstances, maybe personally for me, I might have to go on a match and do that sort of thing. Maybe when I'm abroad or fishing a world champ somewhere. But also, it's got to help all the rest of your fishing. You know, something like that, casting a long way, knowing the gear that you're using, it means that I can maybe refine the rest of my kit. Maybe I can get away, now I know some really good techniques, maybe I can get away with fishing lighter rods at longer distance. You know, I think I can take that forward in the rest of my fishing. Please remember to subscribe, folks. That way you won't miss any more fishing videos. There's loads of content on my channel for everybody. I'm going to spend an age reeling this feeder in. It's going to take me 
half the day I expect. Until next time, folks. Tight lines. <laughs>